imagine a future where your gadgets never run out of power. Well, that can be made real by tiny nuclear battery. What if I told you there's a battery that could outlive you, your children, and even your great-grandchildren? A single power source that lasts for centuries without ever needing a recharge. Sounds like science fiction, right? It isn't. It's the world of nuclear batteries. For decades, these devices sat in obscurity, powering only the most extreme missions in space or science. But now, things are changing. If you've ever wished your devices could run forever, or wondered how we'll power spacecraft, satellites, or drones in the decades ahead, this video is for you. Today, we're pulling back the curtain on nuclear batteries, their origins, breakthroughs, and the future that could change how humanity thinks about energy. Stay tuned, because what's coming next might redefine power as we know it. The Early Era of Nuclear Batteries Nuclear batteries, also called beta voltaics, have existed for decades, but their applications have always been extremely niche. Traditionally, these devices produced only tiny trickles of power, microwatts at best. That's a millionth of a watt, far too small to run anything beyond the most specialized sensors. Take Betavolt, a Chinese company experimenting with radioactive nickel isotopes. Their nuclear battery has a half-life of around 100 years, which means it can keep producing energy for a full century. The output, however, is about 100 microwatts, barely enough to keep a calculator running. In the United States, City Labs has developed batteries using tritium, a radioactive isotope of hydrogen with a half-life of 12 years. These are reliable, but still limited to ultra-low power applications. Across the Atlantic, the British company Arkenlight has been working with Carbon-14, creating devices that may last a staggering 5,000 years. The trade-off? Output so low, it's measured in microwatts. These early nuclear batteries shine in one area, longevity. Imagine sensors buried deep under Antarctic ice, probes drifting in space, or scientific stations in hostile climates. Changing the battery is impossible, so you use one that effectively never runs out. That's where these small, button-cell-sized nuclear devices found their role. But outside of those extreme scenarios, their limited power output made them curiosities, not contenders. From microwatts to watts. Something has changed in the last few years. Companies are no longer satisfied with tiny trickles of nuclear energy. They're trying to scale up. One strategy is stacking. Instead of relying on a single microwatt cell, multiple units are combined to reach higher voltages and usable power levels. For example, the company Infinite Power filed a patent describing a nuclear battery roughly the size of a cubic meter with a power output approaching 3 watts. It may not sound like much, but compared to earlier devices, it's a giant leap. Betavolt also claims its miniature cells can be combined to generate outputs from a few microwatts to several watts. While technical details remain scarce, the concept makes sense. Even a few watts would be enough to power long-lasting sensors, remote communication equipment, or small monitoring stations. Picture a weather beacon in Antarctica, quietly transmitting data for decades, or a wildlife camera that keeps recording without anyone ever replacing its battery. These aren't science fiction anymore. They're the logical next steps as nuclear battery technology grows beyond its microwatt roots. Heat into power. If small nuclear cells can only deliver microwatts to a few watts, how do you go bigger? The answer is to stop trying to harvest charged particles directly and instead use what radioactivity produces in abundance, heat. This is the principle behind radioisotope thermoelectric generators, better known as RTGs. 
RTGs work by placing a heat-generating radioactive material, like plutonium-238 or strontium-90, inside a container and surrounding it with thermoelectric materials. These materials exploit the temperature difference between the hot radioactive core and the cooler outside environment, turning heat into electricity. It's a clever, elegant way to bypass the problem of semiconductor damage from radiation while delivering much more usable power. NASA began deploying RTGs in the 1960s, and they quickly became indispensable. The Voyager probes, the Curiosity rover on Mars, and the New Horizons spacecraft all rely on RTGs. These systems typically produced hundreds of watts, enough to power instruments, communications, and heating systems on long missions far from the sun. The Soviet Union also embraced RTGs, installing them in remote navigation beacons and unmanned stations across Siberia. Yet RTGs have their darker side. Abandoned units have been scavenged in remote regions, sometimes with tragic consequences. People seeking warmth from the heat sources without realizing the deadly radiation inside. Despite the risks, the principle remains powerful. Modern startups are now re-engineering RTGs with safer materials, compact designs, and higher efficiency. By harnessing heat rather than fragile electronics, RTGs represent the bridge between tiny nuclear cells and the kilowatt-scale future. Startups and Military Interest in recent years, nuclear battery development has moved out of the hands of space agencies and government labs and into the fast-paced world of startups. This shift is crucial because startups are agile, willing to experiment, and often push technology toward real-world applications that larger institutions might hesitate to pursue. And among their most interested customers, the military, Take Xenopower, for example. This American startup has patented a new class of compact radioisotope thermoelectric generators. Their designs shrink the size of traditional RTGs while still delivering between 10 and 100 watts of reliable power. Xeno highlights peaceful uses like satellites, seafloor monitoring stations, and scientific equipment in remote regions but it's difficult to ignore the military implications. A drone powered by such a generator could operate for weeks or months without refueling, providing surveillance and communication far beyond current limits. NDB, or Nano Diamond Batteries, has also expanded its vision. Once focused solely on tiny beta-voltaic cells, the company now plans medium-sized RTGs with outputs ranging from single watts to several kilowatts. They market these as solutions for off-grid communities, space habitats, and even localized heating systems. But again, defense applications are clear. Small nuclear power sources that are silent, reliable, and maintenance-free are exactly what armed forces desire for remote bases or autonomous systems. Other players, like Howe Industries, are even experimenting with microreactors, miniaturized nuclear plants capable of generating kilowatts to megawatts. Whether used for space colonies, disaster relief, or underground bunkers, the line between civilian and military use remains razor thin. The future of nuclear batteries. The future of nuclear batteries is shaping up to be both ambitious and disruptive. For most of their history, these devices existed only at the margins, good for powering sensors, spacecraft, or instruments buried in places humans could never reach. Their limitation was always the same, not enough power to matter in mainstream technology. But with recent advances, that limitation is beginning to blur. By stacking beta-voltaic cells, Companies are moving from mere microwatts to usable watt-level outputs, unlocking practical applications like long-lived sensors, beacons, and monitoring stations. More significantly, the revival of radioisotope thermoelectric generators 
offers a path to tens or even hundreds of watts, enough to sustain satellites, underwater vehicles, or military drones. Some startups are even setting their sights higher, developing compact microreactors that could one day deliver kilowatts or megawatts, essentially miniature nuclear power plants. These innovations won't replace lithium-ion in phones or cars anytime soon, but they promise something different. Power sources that can run continuously for decades, immune to weather, sunlight, or refueling cycles. For deep space exploration, ocean science, defense, and remote communities, nuclear batteries could shift from obscure curiosities into essential infrastructure. Their future isn't about convenience, it's about redefining what's possible when energy truly lasts a lifetime. Conclusion Nuclear batteries have quietly evolved from scientific curiosities into serious contenders for powering the future. For decades, their role was limited to ultra-low power devices, tiny sensors, experimental probes, and space missions where reliability mattered more than raw output. But now, the landscape is changing. Companies are scaling beyond microwatts, stacking cells for watt-level performance, and reinventing radioisotope thermoelectric generators to deliver tens or even hundreds of watts. Startups are even exploring compact nuclear reactors designed to produce kilowatts or more. The significance of this shift is hard to overstate. While you won't see nuclear batteries replacing lithium-ion in your phone or car anytime soon, they could soon become indispensable in areas where no other energy source can compete. Satellites that orbit for decades, seafloor research stations, drones that fly for months, or even remote communities cut off from traditional power grids. Their promise lies not in convenience, but in endurance. They represent electricity that outlives generations, providing stable, maintenance-free power where failure is not an option.